Hi there, thank you for joining me in this video on Realized Network Inside Universal and then specifically the federation feature that this new license model unlocks. My name is Martijn and I'll be telling you a little bit about the new uh, license model that we call Realized Network Inside Universal, but then uh, focus specifically on the federation feature with this new license on uh, unlocks. So first, what is the new license that we just launched in March of 2022? It is called Realized Network Inside Universal and it's basically in combination of VRNI cloud instances and VRNI on-prem instances. Basically what you get is a pool of licenses, so the amount of sockets or the amount of network devices that you need to monitor your environment. And then you can allocate that pool into whatever allocation you would you need. So whether that be all into a VRNI cloud instances or a combination of VRNI cloud and VRNI on-prem. It all comes from the same pool, so it doesn't really matter like where you allocate those licenses. You have a single pool of number of, uh, of, of socket licenses, and that kind of gives you the freedom to move around between VRNI cloud and VRNI on-prem. So if you are migrating towards the cloud, for example, and evacuating data centers, uh, evacuating also the VRNI on-prem instance, you can slowly allocate the license and move the licenses from your on-prem infrastructure to the VRNI cloud uh, environment. This new license uh, unlocks a new feature called Federation, which this, uh, this video and demonstration is about, but now we'll get to that in a little bit. But also know that we have a subscription upgrade program uh, running that lets you easily convert your VRNI Advanced, VRNI Enterprise, or the VRNI versions that are attached to the NSX Enterprise Plus license and convert those into VRLIS Network Inside Universal licenses. So you can easily transla translate to the VRLIS Network Inside Universal license pool. So what is the federation feature? Well, VRLIS Network Inside Universal has been designed to easily map out an entire uh, bigger VRNI deployment, and specifically targeting environments which will have multiple VRLIs network inside deployments uh, globally or within the same region. And in this example, we are looking at a VRNI on-prem environment in the Americas, in, the, uh, in EMEA, and then we have a VRNI cloud instance in APJ in Australia. And all of these different deployments can report up onto the federation primary, as we call them. And then you have a single federation dashboard where you can view all of the, the metrics and all of the alert types of all of those environments into one single dashboard. And then from that dashboard, you can easily jump to the specific VRNI instance that you need in order to troubleshoot an issue that the federation dashboard knows about and tells you about. I'll get into the technical specifications uh, in a couple slides. Uh, first off, let's see where all of our VRNI cloud locations are. And we are constantly adding new locations as well. So if you do need a new, new location that's not on this map yet, please contact your uh, VMware representative and we can work with you to, to get into the right region that you need uh, VRNI cloud access to. With this map, we can basically cover the entire world uh, based off of the technical specifications of VRNI with the latest requirements, etc. Right, so what happens in the federation feature when you are linking those multiple VRNI instances together? Well, you have something called the primary instance, which is a VRNI network inside cloud instance somewhere, hosted somewhere, um, typically closer to your engineers, to your admins that are actively using that instance to, uh, to start troubleshooting. And then you have these peer instances that are monitoring the actual infrastructure and are located typically closest to that set infrastructure. So this is the same example where we have on-prem instances in the Americas and EMEA, and then a VRNI cloud instance in APJ, and they're all monitoring their own infrastructure. So a summary of all of this data gets reported up from the peer instance to the primary instance. And then within the primary instance, you have those summary data, those metrics, those number of VMs, those alerts, the flow distribution, you, you have that all available within that um, federation dashboard, which I will show you in the uh, the demo. And then from that primary instance, the, from the federation dashboard, you can easily jump into 
per instance A, for example, if you are troubleshooting a specific alert that you're looking at in that Federation dashboard. So a couple of things to note here is that the peer instances will always connect to the primary instances, not the other way around. So you don't need to open any, uh, any security holes in firewalls or anything. It's just outgoing connectivity from the peer instances to the primary instances. And the peer instances, if it's an on-prem instance, it always needs to be an Excel brick, which is the extra large sizing model of the, uh, the platform appliance that you deploy uh, on-prem. So once you've set that up, you get the Federation dashboard, which I was uh, referring to a little bit, and I'll show you this uh, live in a demo just to make it a little bit more dynamic, but here's a, an overview of the, the summary, like what are all the alerts that are open within these environments? What is the traffic flow distribution? So how many flows are there? How many internet flows, east-west flows, and which, uh, which applications are live within these environments? Um, and then also, a good thing to keep in mind is the key changes. So what have we added or deleted within these VRNI instances? What applications have we discovered and saved? And what, uh, what is the changes to the security posture? So which security groups are there, which have been deleted? That's also a good one. And then you can drill down really deeply into what is the health of specific environments. So if I'm a vCenter admin, I would be interested in the, this current view that we're looking at right now with the VM and the host health, but if I'm a public cloud administrator, I would be interested more in the Azure and the AWS uh, environments with the AC2 instances, etc. And there's also a, a list of the VRI instances themselves and their health of how they are doing themselves. So do you need to upgrade them? Is there a user's problem? Is there a license problem maybe? Uh, those things are also available within here. But enough of the static slides, let's look how that looks in the demo. All right, so I'm in the Virialize Network Inside Cloud environment where we have a primary instance set up that's receiving information from a bunch of on-prem and peer instances, also VRNI on-prem and cloud instances. And first off, what I want to cover is the, uh, the map. So we have this dynamic map where you can zoom in and see where the instances are actually located. So we have a VRNI cloud instance in Oricon, but then we also have a, a VRNI on-prem instance in Palo Alto, but they're also distributed throughout the entire world, as you can see. So this is a very good example of locus localizing data VRNI instances into the, um, the regions where the infrastructure is actually living. So closest to the infrastructure um, and monitoring them locally. So you have this map and uh, red means that there are any, uh, some problems. So I'll, um, I'll dive a little bit deeper into those problems themselves. And if I switch to the table view over here, I can see the health of these, um, these VRNI instances. So it'll tell you if there are any platform appliances or collector appliances with problems. In this case, that is the case for three collectors, but also if there are any problems with data sources. So these are your vCenters, uh, network switches, uh, anything that we is collecting data from, which might have an issue, uh, it'll also report that up. Another thing is the capacity. So if there's reason to upgrade the VRNI uh, instance into a cluster or expand the cluster with a couple uh, extra additional nodes because of the scalability of the data that it's receiving. But in this case, you can see that all of these are, are, are okay. And then uses is the license usage that you have in place in these, um, these instances. So licenses are good, capacity is good. I just have a couple of issues with some collectors and data sources. So in every single of these hoverovers, you can see the open instance link over here. And that's a external link that will launch you into the actual VRNI instance. But I will show you that in a little bit. But let's switch this back to the map. Go into the second most interesting part of this dashboard, which is the environments widget, where we can group on a specific type of infrastructure. And these are all the types of infrastructures that VRNI monitors. So whether that be a public cloud, uh, Azure, or a, uh, an Azure VMware solution environment, so a VMware SDDC inside Azure, or your SD-WAN environment, uh, or even your Kubernetes environment. And I'm currently located on the vCenter environment, so we're grouping on VMs and hosts. And you can see that there's uh, well, a bunch of vCenter VMs with a bunch of problems. 
And of course, this is a demo environment, so we are manufacturing some of these problems. So typically you would want to see all of these green. And if I change these environments, we will get information around the specific context of that environment. So if I'm looking at the public cloud AWS, I get information around my AWS account, around my EC2 instances. And yeah, as you can see, it's behaving very, very well because we have a ton of these EC2 instances over here, but none of them are exhibiting problems, which is great. I can also do the same thing with uh, VMA Cloud and AWS, where we then get information around the SDDC groups or the SDDCs and then the VMs within those, uh, those SDDCs. So if you go through all of these environments, then you will see that context um, rich information that is showing you just the information that you're looking for. So if you're an SD-WAN and an engineer, um, the SD-WAN edges and the internet links are the most important ones to keep an eye out. So yeah, I, I definitely want to see what is going on with my links over here because there's a bunch of problems. And let me actually just open up this instance and go into that context to will view within that VRNI instance that I'm looking at. So this opens up a new tab to that specific instance. So the primary knows where the VRNI peer is living. So whether that be an on-premium environment such as this one or a cloud instance. So if I were to click on a cloud instance, for example, on uh, this one, I would be taken to the right organization within the, uh, the cloud services portal uh, and then open up the same view, but it'll open up the contextual view of what you're actually looking at. So in this case, I clicked the SD-WAN links and then it'll show me all of the alerts that are applicable to the VMware SD-WAN links. Same goes for if I go to uh, like a healthy environment, if I look at Azure, for example, and I want to look at the subscriptions for, for Azure, opens up a new tab and then gives me all of the Azure subscriptions that are located within this VR9 instance and it, that this VR9 instance is monitoring. You can also just go from this part. So if I click this one, then I go to the main page of the VRNI instance, and then you can jump into the page that you're that you're wanting to um, to look into. So all of these environments are a very easy way to limit the information that you're looking for, and also see if uh, see if your Azure or your SD WAN is healthy or not, and then jump into the actual infrastructure, the actual VRNI instance in order to start troubleshooting those alerts and those problems. So all the other things are the alerts, for example. So which critical alerts are we getting from which VRNI instance? And again, if I open up the instance over here, then it will take me to all of the alerts of the 1000 alerts. And then also specify between the different VRNI instances, of course. We have the number of flows that this VRNI instance is collecting and also a categorization between all of the flows, unprotected flows and dropped flows. So any firewall rule that would be dropping these flows and these uh, unprotected flows that are not protected by firewall rules, it also reports that up. And a difference between internet flows and east-west flows. And again, if I click on any of this, I get the drill down between all of the different instances. And then also the number of unprotected flows. And if I click on any of these, then I get taken to that for your instances in the same view. So it's now opening up the flow search for east west traffic and unprotected flow. So no firewall rule is protecting this, um, this flow right here. And we also have a focus on applications. So all the applications that are made up of, uh, of workloads within these, uh, these environments are called applications within VRNI and VRNI can discover them. As you can see here, so these are new applications that have been deployed to these environments, but they've not been saved yet, at least not all of them. So we have some work to do in curating these, uh, these applications and then going from discover to saved so that then, then we can use them within the environment and troubleshoot them. And we also have some information around like which security groups have been added and deleted. And then the same thing also for the data sources. So if there's churn within the network infrastructure, so if there's new switches being added, new vCenters being deployed, those type of things, uh, you will see that within this environment. 
So overall, it's a very straightforward, simple dashboard, but it gives you a very easy way to jump into a specific environment type, see if it's healthy or not, and then start troubleshooting that in the specific instance just by going, oh, I want to open up the this Fear Night on-prem instance and then have a look at the SD-WAN edges that are causing these issues, that are having these issues, and then fix that within that Fear Night instance themselves. So that was it for a demo of the Federation dashboard. Thank you for watching.